everybody. It's a married man here. I've got a project coming up I'm going to need to be able to assemble uh, some square corners for a cabinet. And I've seen it online uh, where you have an assembly board or an assembly table. So I'm going to make a square assembly table out of this uh, scrap of MDF and a couple of scrap pieces of uh, uh, three quarter inch plywood and see how it goes. Come with me, we'll build it. First thing we'll need to do is make sure our boards are straight, at least on one end. And to do that, I'm going to put these together and look for any gaps. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a uh, pretty significant gap. I flex them together, it straightens out, but uh, we're going to reverse one of the boards, try it again, and still significant gap. So let's fix that. We take each of our boards one at a time and attach it so that the edge is overlapping our straight line rip jig. Our straight line rip jig is basically just the end of a 4x8 sheet of plywood or MDF that can then be run through the table saw with the straight edge or the factory cut up against the fence and this will cut off the uneven portion of our board giving us a perfectly straight board. At the, after that we remove the each board from the jig and that gives us two boards which are completely straight. If we look at these together there are absolutely no gap between them now and that makes it possible for us to move forward. You could also just have two straight pieces of board that don't need to go through this process. But you will need to cut a 1 8 inch rabbit for dust relief along the bottom of each board. An alternate method of providing this dust relief would be using a router bit to give a chamfer to allow dust to collect and not get in the way of any building processes. But this way it provides just an eighth of an inch of loss so that as long as our boards are at least a quarter inch, we should be good keeping everything square in the future. With two straight boards, it's time to start assembling our jig. I aligned the two boards in a basic L pattern. Things don't have to be perfectly square at this point. I just need to know where things are approximately going to be. I'm going to attach the first board before I start measuring anything for square. I'm going to do this by applying glue to the board, turning it over, getting it where I want it, then I'm going to pre-drill and then screw this down. You know, the other day, my wife asked me to take a day off work to help her with some things. Being the married man that I am, I contacted my boss and told him, hey, we're going to be doing some heavy house cleaning at home. My wife needs me to help in the attic and clean up the garage. She wants me to move them and haul around a lot of stuff. Of course, my boss said, we're short-handed and with short notice, I can't give you the day off. And I said, thanks, boss. I knew I could count on you. With one of our boards secured, it's now time to pre-drill and screw one end of our other board. We don't want to secure it at the far end because we want this to be the pivot point. You'll notice that I left a small gap there at the corner where anytime we're assembling something, I can get a good view of the way the corner is lining up in the future whenever I'm using this jig. It's now time to square everything up. I get two squares out. One is my machinist square, which is 100% accurate, but too small to get a good measure all the way up. And then I have my framing square, which I'm using to really get everything square. If you're building this jig, no matter how you do it, this is the point to make sure things are square. So whether you use a square 
or the three, four, five triangle method, you need to make sure things are square because using this jig should enable you to keep projects square in the future. For that to be accurate, they must be square now. Once you get it square like you want it, you can secure one end down with a clamp. Here, I'm doing the three, four, five method where I measure out measure units of three on one side, units of four on the other, and then I will measure across, proving that my square corner truly is at 90 degrees. I don't know if you're like me, but I've got a brother-in-law always wanting to borrow tools. One day, when I was frustrated, I called him and said, Hey, can I store my table saw and my cordless drill over in your garage? And of course he said, yeah, Sure, but why would you want to store it over here? And I told him, I just want to have all my tools in one place. Of course, after you get everything square here, you need to pre-drill and put enough screws in so that you know that this will stay true going forward. You're probably wondering why I didn't glue down the second board. Truth is, the first board is always going to be fixed, so I glued it down. The second board needed to be adjusted, and I may need to adjust it in the future, so I didn't apply glue to this board. It should be sturdy enough. Now you see I use a saw to cut off the excess length. I wanted to be able to easily carry this board anywhere in my shop, in other words, my garage, that I wanted to. So I wanted to add some handles. Well, I didn't need anything fancy, so I just put my hand out there and drew a line around where I thought I might uh, be able to build a handle. And then I used a drill to get a hole started so that I could use my scroll saw and cut these holes out that will serve as my handles. Of course, if you build this jig, you may not need handles in it or may not want handles, and that would be your option. I used a sanding drum to clean up the edges on this to make it more comfortable to carry. I did a separate video on these sanding drums, so I'll put the link in the notes. You may be wondering why I would even use MDF for this kind of jig. Well, it's flat, it's stable, and I had a piece laying around. So it was convenient for me to do it with this, but you could do it with plywood or some other material as well. Now it's time to have a way to secure pieces as you assemble them. I'm using these two lever clamps. And by securing these on the side, they then can be used and adjusted for different depths of material and can secure those pieces as you assemble them by simply pressing that lever down. Now I've secured these through Amazon and I think there were five in the pack for around $16. But you can buy different quality ones from different vendors such as Rockler, some of which are like $25 a piece. I'm sure those are nicer, but these will hold down about 200 pounds of pressure. So they serve my needs. I'll put a link to these in the comments below. Hey, don't go anywhere yet. I want to show you an example of how you can use these for assembly. On a recent project, I wanted to use pocket screws and secure an exact 90 degree angle. So I put the post along one side of my jig. I put the board with the pocket holes along the other with a space underneath to create an offset. Then I was able to secure it with my lever clamps and then using my drill, drive the screws into the pocket holes and secure the 90 degree corner. With the next corner, you can see that I did the same thing. Securing the post on one side, the board with the pocket screws on the other, sliding a spacer underneath the board with the pocket screws to create a offset or a reveal, and adjusting my lever clamp so that when I push that red handle down, everything is secure so that I can drive the screws home through the pocket screw holes and not have any movement of the wood, but have a secure 90 degree corner. 
really, this jig provides me all kind of possibilities for holding assemblies together, uh, being able to secure a 90 degree corner without constantly checking with a square. And it's not just for pocket hole jigs. Well, everybody, there you have it. A assembly top that uh, is portable. I can store it away in a small space. I can uh, attach it to a workbench or to a table and be able to assemble corners and know that they're square and uh, secure. And it's got handles at the bottom and at the top um, here or on the side and at the top so that I can uh, carry it easily and store it away. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see others like it, subscribe and like the video. Leave comments on how you would improve this jig and, and how, how you might be able to use it in your shop. And uh, I hear my wife calling, I gotta go.